but we can get out there, reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. What is up, uh, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video. And today, we have to talk about the 2024 presidential election because Kamala Harris has finally picked her vice president. And man, what a complete disaster. Like, I really thought this campaign was going to do something halfway competent and pick someone like Andy Bashir, even Mark Kelly, or even Josh Shapiro for the vice presidency. But nope. This campaign decided, you know what, we need Tim Walls of Minnesota. This isn't a rumor. This is official. Kamala Harris has picked Tim Walls of Minnesota. I'm just baffled at this decision. Again, you could have went with Andy Bashir, Mark Kelly, Josh Shapiro, who, by the way, we'll get to in a minute. He got absolutely screwed. But either way, at least with Andy Bashir and Mark Kelly... Yeah, they don't add much to the ticket, but at the bare minimum, they don't hurt Harris either. Like, Mark Kelly of Arizona, you could argue, at least he's from a swing state, and Andy Bashir's from a deep red state, so it could maybe help Harris a little bit. But Tim Walls? From Minnesota? A state that hasn't voted Republican in, what, 50 years? It's just baffling, and it sounds like an act of desperation. Like, you you could have picked Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, who, by the way, I know he has a lot of baggage, but at least he's a governor from a swing state. Minnesota is a Democrat state, unless the internals are so bad that they're worried about Minnesota, which I don't think is the case, but there's a good chance that, yeah, we're doing so bad in Minnesota that we need the governor to protect it. We cannot afford to lose Minnesota, which would be hilarious, but I I don't know. To me, this is an act of desperation because they just ran out of choices because everyone either said, nope, we're not going to be your VP, or in Shapiro's case, they didn't want him because let's face it, he's Jewish. I know that sounds insane, but this is the modern day Democrat party. They, they don't like Jewish people. They don't. And the Harris campaign understands they're in deep shit in Michigan, for example, with the Muslim vote. That's the reality of it. It sucks, but it's true. So they thought, okay, we, we cannot pick Josh Shapiro. We're going to claim it for other reasons. But in reality, it's because he's Jewish. He's pro-Israel, all of that. So let's go with Tim Walls, who is really our final option because it, it came down to Tim Walls and Josh Shapiro. So this sounds like an act of desperation. It doesn't sound like, oh yeah, we we really wanted Walls. Eh, I don't think so. I, I think this was a last second decision that they made because Josh Shapiro, they didn't want. And you want some proof that this was a last second decision? Look at this. This is the official campaign sign you can buy on the hair store. Yeah, look at this. Look how bland it looks. It, it looks like they put this together in five seconds. Look at this. This is not a parody. This isn't something on Amazon you could buy for a buck or something. No. Th this is their official campaign sign. It's lazy. It's generic. It, it looks like Elizabeth Warren's campaign sign from 2020. But either way, look at this. What is this? No slogan? It's just KamalaHarris.com. It, a generic font, it just looks bad. It looks like they made this decision five minutes ago and they had to make something quick and they made this sign. Just a baffling decision. It's just, why? Why put out this sign? It's low effort. It looks like they just don't give a shit. Or it's a last second decision that they had to make something quick like, oh God, we're picking walls uh, quick. Go on MS Paint and make something. It really does look like this was a last-second decision made by a campaign that was panicking, and they didn't think through picking him Walls. They didn't think through it. They just thought, oh, we picked him Walls, we're fine. Of all the possible VPs, you could argue Tim Walls has the most baggage. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you read into Tim Walls' record, 
it becomes really bad. For example, Jack Posobiec, like five seconds after Tim Walls was announced as the VP selection, he dropped this bombshell. According to this report, National Guard leaders published a letter exposing Tim Walls for stolen valor. Walls lied about his rank and quit when he heard his unit was going to mobilize to Iraq. Yeah. This is a clear contrast with J.D. Vance, who actually went to Iraq. Tim Walls, on the other hand, apparently, I'm not saying this is 100% true, but it sounds like it. It sounds like the second that his unit was mobilized, he said, nope, I can't go. Nope, I'm out. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. If that's the case, man, that, you're already off to a really bad start. If that's your VP selection, someone that possibly was exposed for stolen valor, th that's not a good start whatsoever. This is just basic research. I think this was an article from 2018 that Pasabic somehow found. I don't know how he did, but he found a possible bombshell. If this is really true that Tim Walls did this, for starters, what a scumbag. Who would do such a thing? Like, really? You decide to steal Valor? It's a very scummy thing to do, but let's say he in fact did it. For, again, he's a scumbag if he did. But if this is true, the Trump campaign should attack him 24-7 and compare him to J.D. Vance, who actually served in Iraq. This is, a, this is such a basic win for the Trump campaign, but it'd be a big one. It's basic, but it's such a big thing where Walls, he got exposed for stolen valor, while Vance, he actually went to Iraq. He served. He didn't lie about it. This is a serious scandal, and I cannot believe the Harris campaign. They, they either don't care, and they... They just think, oh, that's not a big deal. Or they didn't do the research. They didn't know that Tim Walls did this, got exposed for this. Either way, that's not a good look either way because you're talking about someone that possibly got exposed for stolen valor. Not good at all. And speaking of the Trump campaign, they must be an open celebration right now because within the first like five minutes of them announcing Walls, They've been attacking walls constantly, not just, you know, one tweet and that said, no, it's been like 50 different tweets, like 10 different videos. They've been exposing walls for not only being a far left nut job, but funny enough for being weird. And this might be the single biggest blunder by the Harris campaign. Remember how they try to paint Trump advances weird? Well, now the Trump campaign, they're saying, you know what? We're going to flip the table over, and we're going to do the same thing you clowns. But unlike the attacks against Vance and Trump that are just weak, I really believe these attacks are going to actually work because you talk about insane stuff. Some of the stuff that Walls has said or done in the past, like, four to five years, is outright delusional. It's crazy. It's insane. Not just, oh, he said something kind of off, you know, 20 years ago. No. He actually took action on some very bizarre things that the more you think about it, it's like, wait, huh? What did he do? For example, look at this. Wall signs bill requiring schools to stock period products in boys' bathrooms. That's not a parody. He actually signed a law like this. And the Trump campaign, the only thing they say is weird. Which it is. This is insane. It's like, the more you think about it, like, wait, period products in boys' bathrooms? Huh? Wait, wait, what? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It's crazy. And that's what the Trump campaign, I really believe, they're going to do. They're going to flip the table on the Vance is weird stuff and say, oh yeah, Vance, Vance is weird? Look at your VP selection. Tim Walls is a nut job. As governor of Minnesota, he did stuff like this. That's why I think it's effective because unlike Vance, where it's just stuff he said that are not is not weird, it's common sense. But either way, he, v Walls actually did the stuff. He didn't say he would. It's oh yeah, I'm the governor and I signed this into law. And his record and other stuff like 
illegal immigration is a joke. Tim Walls just a year ago signed a law that gave driver licenses to illegal immigrants. Yeah. It just keeps going. And the stuff he actually says, like, anytime he speaks, it's like, wait, what? Look at this. A couple years ago, Chairman Walls, they called him. I've lived in China. Uh, I would not admit that, but fine, whatever. You lived in China for a year for school or whatever. Fine, whatever. I don't fall into the category that China necessarily needs to be an adversarial relationship. Yeah. Now, I can understand saying, you know, we shouldn't have a war with China. Fine. But China hates our guts. They're adversaries, especially economically. So why would you say this? To me, that's just someone that's out of touch. And when you say you lived in China, people are going to say, wait, you lived in China and you're saying this about how it shouldn't be an adversarial relationship? Um... That doesn't seem correct. That doesn't seem like a good idea to say that. That doesn't sound right. And it just keeps going. There's a bunch of stuff like this. Remember the whole Target stuff? Tim Walz went on MSNBC and said, it's insane for people to be upset at Target. For those that don't know, Target partnered with a satanic designer that promoted transgender products to kids. That's not even a joke. That's not a parody. It's not a conspiracy. That's what happened. And Tim Walls, he went on national TV and said that, that it's insane that people would be upset. What? How is that insane? Just the more you think about it, the more baffling it gets. It's like, so you're picking an open progressive, someone that says a lot of weird stuff, actually weird, not just, you know, oh, 20 years ago he said something about pizza or whatever. Like, no, it's, oh yeah, um... We should give illegals driver licenses. You know, we should g give uh, period products in boys' bathrooms or something. It's, it's just, the more you read into this guy, the more bizarre it looks. And some people are going to say, well, it's obvious this was a selection to appease the progressives. All right? That, that's what some people are saying. But I have many questions about that, such as, wait, I, I thought Kamala Harris was already boosting enthusiasm with Democrats. Why would you need Tim Walls if you didn't have a problem with some of these voters? Well, well why do you need Walls to double down? Um, th that tells me that this idea that there ha uh, there's a hair surge, eh, if they need Tim Walls to boost enthusiasm, they might have a problem. They might. Not say it's a guarantee, but when you think about it, yeah. If you need Tim Walls to make Democrats more enthusiastic, then, then what the hell are you guys talking about that hairs up by 15 points because of enthusiasm? What? That, that doesn't sound right. But number two, if your whole point of not picking Josh Shapiro was Israel stuff, why did you pick Tim Walz? Look at this. Tim Walz has a very pro-Israel record. It, as late as June, he said, the ability of Jewish people to self-determine themselves is foundational. The failure to recognize the state of Israel is taking away their self-determination, so it is anti-Semitic. That's what he said. If the whole point was to appease the, the, the pro-Palestinian people in the Democrat Party, you failed. Because he is very pro-Israel. He, is pro, he has a very pro-Israel track record. That I don't think this is a good move by Harris. I really I think this might be one of the biggest blunders her campaign could have done. Because not only did you pick a progressive that everyone's thinking's a whack job for some of the stuff he said and did, but if you're trying to appease the progressives, the Muslims, all of that, you fail miserably. Because he's pro-Israel. In fact, he's probably one of our pro-Israel Democrats as of now. It's just a baffling decision. I don't get what the Harris campaign was thinking of. I, I don't think they were thinking at all. They just thought, or didn't think, they just picked Walls because they ran out of people. Everyone else said no, or Josh Shapiro is Jewish. That's what I think happened here. It's, it's crazy to say that, but it's, that's what happened. Why would you pick Tim Walls? If you really wanted a safe option, just go with Andy Bashir. Adds nothing to the ticket, but 
And at least he doesn't hurt the ticket either. He's just there. It's just whatever. He's the running mate, but that doesn't really matter. Either way, this is so far the biggest mistake the Harris campaign has done, and I think the Trump campaign has handled this perfectly. Bombard walls with all this stuff. Like, oh yeah, he said this about putting period products in boys' bathrooms. He says some weird stuff about China. It just, it keeps going with the guy. And the thing is, it hasn't even been an hour, or not even two hours, I should say. And the Trump campaign has dug up like a hundred clips of him saying some just out there stuff that the average person's going to read about and say to themselves, uh, okay, that's not right. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.